I really have no idea where we're going to start today's video. So this is exactly where we're starting today's video. There is a massive update coming to the channel and a really big box. Let me get it. As you can see, and hopefully you can still hear me, it is about the size of my desk and hopefully it doesn't give away what it is. I'm going to have to blur that. I'll try to pivot it and hopefully there's no personal details on that side of the box. But this is something I've been stewing on for quite a while now. And this is not a sponsored video. I have not got anything for free. This has been paid for with my own hard earned cash off the channel here. So thank you so much. Almost three and a half K of you are subscribed. Now, if you aren't, please do subscribe. You do not want to miss what is coming to the channel. I tend not to like giant boxes, especially from the outside on my desk because you don't know where they've been. So I'm going to have to scrub this down. We will be cracking it open in just a minute. But first off, I do want to say there'll be a bonus video related to today's video for members only. And it was originally going to be this video, but I decided to purchase this item in the box. Again, I won't leave you hanging on for too long. All I'll say is there's a bonus video for members. It's not this month's video. So there's also a second bonus video behind the scenes for October. If you aren't aware, members get at least one video a month going behind something big that's happened on the channel. So today's video will be about this printer. There's also another one up just generally about how I record the videos that came out about a week or two ago now. And there's one coming later this month, maybe even a second one, who knows, or a third one at that point. But I think we should get this box open right now and take a look at what's inside. So I tried time lapsing me opening the box. And first off, the box was a bit too big. I should have probably second guessed that. But it went about as well as I could have expected. But we're still not done yet as we've got to get through the interior packaging. That went just about as good as I should have expected, really. Whilst I'm cracking this open, I do want to ask, if any of you have worked in retail, did you keep your box openers? Because this makes it so easy getting into a box. You could probably even 3D print the design of the handle to go with any other blades. And if you haven't worked it out yet, this is a 3D printer. And big, big upgrade to my last one. In fact, I think it cost about the same, but my first 3D printer I got a few years ago before 3D printing was really as popular as it is now. So it did cost a lot more, but I'm sure you still can't see exactly what it is. So I'm gonna get the boxes open and then we'll take a look at what this means for the future of the channel. By the way, I am completely blaming Brixie for my purchase here because he was sponsored by Bamboo Lab about their new or recently released printers. And that encouraged me to make this purchase. I think there was something important in that. I think I got it. I have no idea what this is, but as you can see, the 3D printer is more or less unboxed. There's definitely a few more bits of foam. Hopefully this is recyclable. I know some foam can be, I think it's dissolved in water. I'm not speaking about getting any acids and trying to recycle this myself, but hopefully this is recyclable. I've got to keep this for the next couple of weeks for the warranty of the product, which it does tell you when you're opening the box on the front flap. And I think this is pretty much ready to go off the back. So my first 3D printer was an Aquila X2, which to be fair is a pretty decent printer, but it is very hands-on. And because I'm not the greatest with 3D printing, I've learned quite a bit in my last two years on the topic, but it does still take me a couple of days just to level it out and set it up when something goes wrong and check basically go over all the steps. And this printer here is the Bamboo A1 Mini. Again, not sponsored. There is a decent deal on this at the time, though I'm sure there'll probably be a better one towards the end of the year. So keep your eye out if you do want to purchase this. But this is pretty much ready to go straight out of the box, except for all the little foam bits that you've got to take off. And I might need scissors for that one. Or perhaps not. This is a really handy tool. 
And that is honestly why I'm looking at upgrading it. I've been doing recently, especially, a lot, and I mean a lot. I don't know if the light's in the way. All right, I've propped it up on one of the foam pads as well. We will change camera angle in just a second, but this is easier when I'm taking it out of the box. As I was saying, we've been doing a lot of 3D printing here on the channel, and I would like to push it one step further, but having to re-level my bed, by the way, I have been completely leveling it wrong for the past two years because I've been trying to make the springs as loose as I can so that they're not going to be expanding over time, which is completely the opposite thing to what I should have been doing. So that's nice to know two years into the hobby. But now this printer does everything automatically. There's really nothing much to it. And it's purely because I saw someone like Brixy, no offense to Jordan, but he doesn't strike me as the sort of person that is very techy and could level a 3D printer every time he wants to print sub storage. He's much more of a woodworker, which I definitely am not. So I guess we both got our areas of expertise and the fact that he could use it so easily and so quickly as well for someone who didn't have a 3D printer really impressed me. And I thought if it works for him, I'm really going to have no worries for it. If anything goes wrong on the techie side, I'll be able to sort it out. I didn't get the AMS upgrade with it, which I might regret at some point. It was only an extra £100 with it, whereas it's 200 or 2 something without it. By the way, this printer costs £270-odd and then an extra 10 up for delivery, which is something like $375, but don't quote me on that so it's an expensive investment and honestly there is still foam and cardboard falling down all around me but honestly it was between this and the dungeons and dragons cmf so i have sacrificed the cmf for this hopefully it's worth it i mean with this machine we could print the entire line of dungeons and dragons cmf perhaps that would be an interesting video though again definitely painting is not my strong suit but we got a bunch of accessories i could always do a short unboxing this because i actually went and watched one before i ordered it so i knew roughly what to expect and i must say i didn't see anyone unbox a wireless mouse with it but i'll be very intrigued to see what's actually in this box because it doesn't feel like a mouse. So I have on the desk everything I got in the package and the thing I'm most interested in is this. I think it's a little, I, I don't know how to explain this. It's basically a little poop scooper for the printer. I think this clips onto the end. It must clip onto the end there somehow. And uh, yeah, it the printer moves over and this really isn't the most interesting thing about the printer, but it's something I'm so fascinated with. As it moves over, it collides with this, gets rid of a little bit of filament when it needs to change colours. I'm not going to be using this, but it's handy to have. Perhaps when I change filament, this will be handy. And then once it has put a little bit of plastic down there to rinse it of its colour, it lets go and it just scoops it off to the side. I'll have to 3D print a little bin to collect these in, but I'm pretty sure this clips just under there, and that is very, very handy to have. We also have this spool holder, which is what's gonna hold the plastic and whatever I'm printing with. It's meant to clip on. I really need to read the instructions before I do anything with this, but that's gonna go off to the side somewhere. Perhaps that clips on the back. I'm not really sure holds the plastic on there and just stops it running around. We've got a bit of test filament, which is nice because I didn't order any bamboo lab filament because I've still got a few of my older filament to run through. But this will be a great test because I'm very interested in their reusable filament because it doesn't come with a spool, which makes it a bit more eco-friendly than most. We've got a Bowden tube as well. I do believe the machine has some sort of i don't really know what the machine has there for the four different colors which i probably won't be using i don't know where the extruder is i don't think it's a direct drive so it must be on the right somewhere so i guess the bowden tube goes from the right into the middle but again it's something i have to play around with now for the wireless mouse components if we can get into this i keep thinking there Oh, going to open up the top, but they actually all open on the side. You can see we don't actually get a mouse. We get the components 
of a mouse, which is basically the motherboard. I don't know if you've ever taken a mouse apart and looked inside. I have for mine because it keeps breaking so often. So this could be quite interesting because I actually do need a new scroll wheel for my mouse. And if I'm able to take the component from this, I might have to play around with this before I start breaking it down, but I might try and take the scroll wheel component for this for my mouse because it's a lot cheaper than buying another one and it actually has a nice scroll wheel in there too but this is so you can 3d print a mouse which i don't know if any of the files are like preloaded i know when i got my aquila they had a bunch of different upgrades for the printer but i don't see bamboo having many upgrades for this level of printer we also have a random kit which is packed it says seemingly random so i'm not sure how random this is but we can take a little look because i suppose they've got to include some level of stuff that we're going to need this is to clean the extrude a bit right at the end it's a little needle i already have i think i already have quite a few of these I have at least one of these so this will be kept in pretty much good condition i mean i'm not one for collecting lego in new condition but these needles these are definitely staying on my shelf but in all seriousness this is a much better container for them you can fit multiple in there the one i've got at the minute is just well like the foam you saw me unpack from the 3d printer it's just a square of that at the end that you stick it into so you don't poke yourself when you're trying to get it i think this is quite a random element i'm not quite sure what this is for it looks like it screws into somewhere i'll have to read the instructions for that we've also got some lubricant and i have no idea what that says because i do not read that language okay i i'm silly you can just flip it so i've got oil and grease can't believe i didn't notice that i've got two little allen keys which are usually for the screws around the thing with the voxel lab printers is they use basically every size of allen key under the sun except for the ones that you own so it's nice that it's only coming with two i suppose we'll only need the two we've got two screws for the scraper i assume this must be the scraper we must be able to screw this onto the end and it can like clear off prints when we're done which is handy because what i haven't said i'm really not selling this but you can use it remotely from your phone and even from the computer my old one i got a little sd card i put in turn the knob and select what to print select the temperatures and have to do everything manually you can't really code it without a raspberry pi or something like that and that gets a bit too technical for a lego channel if i'm honest a few different screws i'm really interested to see what's in this black pouch i don't know oh this is for the four different Bowden tubes probably to go into that but i don't know what's in here and this is like a lego cape box is the best way i can describe it oh wow we've got We've got a razor. Why do we have a razor? I'm going to put this back because, again, I haven't read the instructions and I don't fancy harming myself on what is just meant to be a reveal video for this printer. If you're curious about what sort of things we 3D print here on the channel and haven't seen any of them before, I've got my anniversary minifigures at the minute in 3D printed displays, which was my, I think, second iteration of a brand new CMF base that I was trying to push, but I've somewhat accepted the feet on that and are working instead on my own custom plates. So there'll be an upgrade to this. Hopefully it will be centered because I have a brand new printer that I don't have to dial in myself. So I'm looking for perfection. We've also printed our own bricks here, which are all individual bricks that clip together and this design does actually have a similar clutch power to lego it's nothing like lego but it's the best i can get with a 3d printer i print the clone displays behind as well and i'm looking at printing so many more custom elements for my mocks going forward because sometimes you just need a combination of lego bricks and rather than trying to wield two pieces together or try and file them down break them down especially with a minecraft chest i have cut the arms off one of the minecraft chests but rather than trying to deface all of the lego in case i build a pirate mock in the future i can just print the bases for it so the future of 3d printing on this channel specifically for lego i'm not going to do any other designs but lego which is why i opted for the mini there's only so big you can print a lego brick we also will be looking at the return of quattro and even primo 
with this printer, which is something until recently I didn't even notice was under the Lego banner. I used to love playing with the Primo bricks. But if you are interested, do be sure you subscribe so you don't miss out. Drop a like on the video if you are as excited as I am. I am ready to go. I'm going to be setting this up as soon as I finish recording. And don't forget, if you do want to become a channel member, you do get a behind the scenes on my last printer, its dying days, and the eventual death of the Aquila X2. So I hope you did enjoy this video. Check out the videos on screen now, and may the bricks be with you always.